and we are recording again. Hello! <laughs> we are reading Seeker again. And we have just read chapter 14. And things went very bad for everybody involved, except for Wraith. <laughs> <laughs> and now we are in a sort of limbo. She does not know this place. The dim light only makes it harder to see into the mist. What do you want, Seeker? A stranger. I was sent to take you home. She strains her eyes. This is a family matter, Seeker. Oh. I'm a bit confused here. Yeah, because that's the point. Um, she strains her eyes. This is a family matter, Seeker. The speaker must be nearby. If only she could see a little farther. But I have a contract. The voice breaks into a hundred whispers all around her. You should know better. Private contracts are nothing but trouble. The, myth the mist gathers up to choke her, and the darkness burns her skin. A flock of papers flutters into her face. She knows she must escape. She runs, but legs don't carry her forward. This must be a dream. She just needs to wake herself up. She squeezes her lids shut and opens them again. Of course, she's at the training grounds, her usual corner, heaving, sweat dripping from her forehead. She must have blacked out for a moment. She spits out some phlegm and returns to her target, an unfortunate dummy just begging to be beaten into a blob. The padding on her hands is torn loose, her swollen, bloodied knuckles breaking out. She squints and measures out the punch. Another. Something's wrong. The punches don't connect, no matter how hard she hits. Is she still dreaming? She gasps for air, and then she's falling, endlessly, past impossible landscapes. Carry on? Uh, let's pause here. So okay. I, can, I can see how the format doesn't help breeding here. So I think it, I I've tried to keep it so that each of the uh, each of the dream nuggets is a single paragraph. But what I could do here is so at least when there is dialogue. Let's mm -hmm. Let's follow our own dialogue conduct. a very okay very old full stop here mm. uh, let me do one thing here four more paragraph blip, 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 line spacing yes yeah I, I think um, I think some of the uh, some of the paragraph uh, macros have carried over. I must have edited this in uh, in a LibreOffice mm. file, and some of the paragraphing uh, or for formatting stuff has carried over. That's why that's why the paragraphs are so or why the new lines have the extra space between them here. Anyway, <clears throat> carry on. She comes to, crouching in the dark, her palms resting on the cur. She comes. <laughs> Just a second. She comes yeah, to, comma. Curdly. I Cur made it up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she comes to, crouching in the dark her palms resting on the curdly stone crop leaves. 
Sneaking out has become sneaking out has become a second nature. Staff access, garden, gate, alley, into the maintenance grid, hallow streets. At night time, these districts have the superior light. Her posse is already waiting. Hey! They don't seem to notice her. She tries again, despite the loud ground traffic, but her voice dries up before she can get a word out. She knows she needs to make contact. She has an urgent message to tell. She must get through. She must... Incoming lights blind her, and the noises blend into a crushing roar. What is she doing here? This isn't right. She has to... She has to get to the office and... She can barely reach above the marble desk. She needs to talk to her father. Needs to show him something. Father is always hiding behind that huge desk. She makes herself very tall and hoists her nose over the edge. There is a tray on the desk with two empty glasses. Look what I found, Dada! She holds up a miniature dagger, gently, as she's been taught. Her father gives one glance at the shimmering blade and turns away. Does he not see how pretty it is? That's very nice, Jewel. His voice sounds funny. Go on, then. It's almost time for your tutor. She tries to run around the huge desk and face him, but trips and tumbles into the carpet mountains. She can't get up. She cannot move at all. The office dissolves to a vista of teal sky over endless deforested hills. Something is carrying her towards the horizon, and the steady sway is making her queasy. Something must have gone wrong. Her whole body is aching. But this isn't real. This has already been. She knows that. She struggles to speak up, but can't. She needs to get out. She needs to wake up. Stop here for the moment. Yep. Personally, there's, I can't see anything that needs improving. Uh, I think some punctuation uh, is a little bit off. Although it's it's a matter of taste, I guess. So it's more like um, ba basically. So since if if this wasn't obvious uh, yet, this is all a uh, a basically a fever dream sequence. Uh, so Jewel has been fatally shot, and and her mind is drifting. And and uh, and uh, her senses are picking up uh, some stuff that might be happening around her, and also she's sort of struggling with the burning questions that she's been struggling all this time. And uh, and basically the the main question here is where to cut off the fragments so that it's it's clear that okay, next slide. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I so didn't. I should have scrolled down a little bit further because this. I stopped reading like five lines before the end of the thing itself anyway, so I should yeah. have just scrolled down and kept reading. <laughs> yeah, so maybe one, uh, when you start reading, uh, maybe you read from... The Where your marker is, yeah. Yeah, from the page's top. Gotcha. Uh, there's a note down the bottom here. Yeah. That burning sensation from her dream, it followed her and was eating her inside out. She's wiggling, squirming. Just read the line that's there, yeah? Yeah. Okay, cool. And we will discuss it then. She can't get up. She cannot move at all. The office dissolves to a vista of teal sky over endless deforested hills. Something is carrying her towards the horizon, and the steady sway is making her queasy. Something must have gone wrong. Her whole body is aching. But this isn't real. This has already been. She knows that. She struggles to speak up but can't. She needs to get out. She needs to wake up. Swamped in the milky haze, she is clawing her way to the surface. Jewel! The voice echoes very far away. Jewel, can you hear me? She twists her uncompliant limbs. She's almost got it. The voice, it, it's closer. It's familiar. Father? Her dun, eyes shot. Dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> Are we pausing there, or...? Uh. Well, logically, there is a pause. Mm -hmm. So let us <laughs> take a pause. But then I think you can carry on uh, reading. Just got to... 
realign my chakras. <laughs> her eyes shot open, and she caught a blurry figure hovering over her. Jewel, you need to lie still. Do you understand? This was not the voice of Maxis, nor their home language. Her vision cleared, and she found herself staring into Overseer Raptor's concerned scowl. How? Speaking up made her recoil in pain. She bit her lip and stared at him with the obvious question. Raptor nodded. I know who you are. I, I know your family, Jewel. No. That, so, try it again. Do, do you want to read it out and then... The last sentence is... Okay, first of all, I would I would like to add... Yes, I know who you are. I know your family. But Jewel is the next thing already. So it's like... Right. Yes, I know who you are. I know your family. Okay. Jewel! <laughs> so th that's that's where she she starts thrashing around. Raps nodded. Yes, I know who you are. I know your family. Jewel! <laughs> that burning sensation from her dream, it had followed her and was eating her inside out. Jewel, listen. Listen! I know you're in great discomfort right now, but I need you to stay still for a little while longer. She managed to steady herself, and Raptor eased up a little. It's the injections, Synthesa class nanobots. They facilitate rapid regeneration and, well, you still need professional treatment to address the foreign bodies and displaced tissue, but short term, this will get you back on your feet. He paused, as if anticipating her guts to burst out and attack him. Even a single dose means a tremendous gamble. I gave you three. Getting someone back from death's door is a messy business. If it had worked on her... Jewel shaped the thought into a careful whisper. My father? Jewel shook his head. Sorry, kiddo. <laughs> he was Ra too far gone. Raptor shook his head. What did I say? Did I say Jewel again? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Jewel shaped the thought into a careful whisper. My father? Raptor shook his head. Sorry, kiddo. He was too far gone. one thing here immediately if mm. it nice so I remember that that line gave me some headache for a long time or like basically I wanted to work in the idea that you will puts two and two together like okay I have some healing nano goop in me did he inject my father mm. but uh, back at the uh, back uh, during that working ground I don't think uh, I had consciously starting uh, I had consciously started uh, putting in the inner thoughts in italics yet so it didn't it didn't occur to me to put it in put it like <laughs> this <laughs> that works really well yeah uh let's go back to the thingy here the burning s sensation from her dream it had followed mm -hmm. her and was e eating her inside out uh do i need to um so basically why the comment is here is that i'm not I wasn't certain if it was clear enough that she has started to fresh about. From the preceding and prior sentences, mm -hmm. they make it obvious. Okay, so I will cut out the question and leave it like this. Yeah, uh, I can see that the paragraphing and and punctuation is is in a little bit sorry state in this one, but then again, the 
this uh, this isn't very far from the first draft, or like more more like this is the first version that I put together based on based on your plot. So <laughs> it's it's not supposed to be in in as polished uh, state as some of the others. <coughs> Carry on. Uh, just a second. Uh, mm -hmm. She managed to steady herself and wrapped raised up a little. I'm not sure why I have marked this. Maybe it's just a sort of. Maybe I I have marked it as a potentially clumsy expression. Maybe drop a little. Yeah. She managed to steady herself and wrapped her eased up. It's the injections, Cindisa class yeah. nanobots. Uh, it, that's that's the thing though. He doesn't he doesn't ease up all the way. Like he's he's still sort of like mm. wary. So maybe eased up somewhat. A little works better hmm. in in that instance. Yeah, I keep it, and if anyone picks up on it, then that, discuss. Yeah. But the, there's nothing clunky about the phrasing or anything like that. Okay. Eased up a little is is perfectly fine. Okay. And I remember you had uh, some quarrel with the obvious question, but I think right now the context around it also sort of mm. presents it's obvious, so I think for now, remove markers, give it to the mercy of the readers, and we will, we will see about that. Mm-hmm. Okay, carry on. A hint of sorrow grazed her mind and passed, yielding to a restless discontent until simple curiosity took over. Jewel dared to stretch her neck and peek around. She lay atop Max's marble desk amidst the remains of a gutted first aid unit. Her jacket wrapped around her bent legs, a humming transfuser cuffed to her right arm and the bandage pile up on her chest, obscuring half the view. She worked up the courage and flexed her free forearm. Apart from a modicum of tingling, it seemed to work just fine. She probed upward, finding a whole neck tightly bound in trauma tape. Then, what warm, wet goop had she just wandered into? Her fingers came back with oily, off-color substance on them. This stuff... Speaking still hurt, but not nearly as much as before. Is this what's making my bones crawl? A byproduct of their work, yes. Jewel grunted, and Raptor gave her one of those horror anticipation looks again. It gets worse, I'm afraid. Cindisa pushes you through long-term healing within a heartbeat, and your body will do its best to cope with all that stress. So will your brain. She didn't quite follow. What I mean is... You might have to deal with some strong, unpredictable emotions. When that happens, just try to remember it's the treatment doing this. Meanwhile, I'll do my best to keep your focus elsewhere. Jewel uttered an affirmative snort. So? I know who you are. I've always known. Raptor sat himself to the... I'm going to start, I'm going to pause here for a sec. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <sighs> Uh, uh, this should be Raptor sat himself on the desk's edge. Yes, what, what do I have here? Two. Or is that more like lent himself against... Yeah, it's it's like when you put your butt to the edge. Hmm, yeah. The, um... Uh, the specific movement and uh, and position can vary. The point is that uh, that he is positioning him uh, himself in such a way that he can uh, uh, talk to her easily. Mhm. Mm I th I would go with lent against the desk or desk's edge as opposed to set himself. Mhm. Mm to the the thing we're trying to get across is more leaning than sitting. I think. Mhm. Mm Go, go, catch your dinner thought. <laughs> and a 
at the beginning here, I think I have marked this uh, yielding to restless discontent until simple curiosity took over. I think I've marked it because it seemed, I'm not sure if it's redundant. Like on one hand, it's, uh, it's a little bit too much text. On the other hand, mm, it's like, uh, I think I've tried to telegraph that her mind is sort of hopping all over the place, like, oh, bad stuff. Oh, what's that? <laughs> Ooh, shiny. Oh, sad. Ooh, shiny. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's that's the idea here. But I, I'm I'm not certain if it's if it's necessary. But on the other hand, I don't want to give it up all the way. Yeah, I think there needs to be a beat between. A hint of sorrow grows to mind mm -hmm. and past, and jeweled hair to stretch her neck. What that beat should be, however. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So again, I think let's leave it in and see if any of the readers pick it up. Mm -hmm. Oh, the pressure! <laughs> here I'll start reading from back here the transition from from uh, Raptor's dialogue to Jewel's reaction to Raptor's dialogue again should be more like you do that or uh, I don't know so or maybe maybe she shouldn't sh say anything at all out of all of them I like you do that the best <laughs> <laughs> yeah but then again it's still the point where it hurts to talk so she sh shouldn't just sass about all the way yeah duh <laughs> <laughs> Oh, where was it? I was going to read from here, wasn't I? Uh, what What was the satim? What did you want to change with the desk's edge? A raptor leant against the desk, or leant against the desk's edge, leaned. or leant himself. Yeah, leaned. or leaned on the desk. Raptor leaned. Raptor leaned to. It should be on. On the desk. And no, no edge needed. Or, or leaned against the desk. What do you reckon? Again, that yeah, I like, so I like that. Neutral enough, I suppose. Why is this section highlighted? I don't remember. It might be that I wasn't sure about the wording. Sounded alright to me. Yeah. I think a lot a lot of these uh markers are like I have I have maybe been unsure if the wording is clear enough or if it's uh sharp enough and I've just sort of or maybe I have worked out the wording and I have left it marked in case it doesn't work. Mm. So it's like so I know where to sort of pick up my doubts or whatever. Okay, carry on. Jewel grunted, and Raptor gave her one of those horror anticipation looks again. It gets worse, I'm afraid. 
Sindisa pushes you through long-term healing within a heartbeat, and your body will do its best to cope with all that stress. So will your brain. She didn't quite follow. What I mean is, you might have to deal with some strong, unpredictable emotions. When that happens, just try to remember it's the treatment doing this. Meanwhile, I'll do my best to keep your focus elsewhere. Jewel uttered an affirmative snort. I know who you are. I've always known. Raptor leaned against the desk. When your brother was taken, Maxis and Trista never stopped looking. But they were dissuaded from direct efforts. Normally, someone in their shoes would hire a seeker to do the job. But your mother had learned the hard way that her former associates inside the ranks could not be trusted. I too was inside but could only do so much without raising suspicions from early on you were showing quite some martial talent so your parents came up with a desperate plan from early on you were showing quite some martial talent so your parents came up with a desperate plan I don't know if they actually thought it would work I don't know if they actually thought it would work man inflection is important ellipses and pauses kind of have a place here uh, world building thing I think uh, I think at this point we still treated seekers as if it was the organization to go but I think uh, we need to change this uh, normally someone in, in their shoes would hire uh, what was the hire someone like a seeker normally someone in their shoes would hire someone like a seeker to do the job someone someone Should we even point out seekers specifically here or just say would hire an agent? I think context is enough. Like the Yeah. It's obvious, I think. Also agent or bounty agent or bounty hunter. I think I'm biased bounty. towards bounty hunter. Because I love that fucking word. <laughs> <laughs> Bounty Hunter's a great word. <laughs> it's that... <laughs> we're not thugs! We're enforcement! There's difference! <laughs> You're thugs! <laughs> I think that exact, or almost very close to that exact sentence comes up in uh, Split Personality 2. P.S. Spoilers for the first draft, which... <laughs> Is, you know, <laughs> at the end, Taborn is in a prison cell and Fallon's sort of gloating a little bit. Um, well, not really gloating. He's he's there to have a discussion with Taborn, trying one last time to see if he can if he can get sense out of him. Um, and they say t t Fallon makes the comparison that Taborn leads a group of easily impressionable thugs. And Taborn says the same about the Gathram crew. Like he's like, they're just your thugs, sort of thing, you know. Mm. Don't. Know. But there's there's a moment, there's a reason for that moment. Like Fallon then understands something about his crew. Uh, so in that instance, it's meaningful. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, uh, I th I think um, we won't uh, make it through this chapter through the through all the chapter today. So let's focus on. On this, uh, on this dialogue mostly. So okay. point one. Okay, I know that earlier already. Uh, uh, when when 
raptor starts speaking. So Joe will utter an affir affirmative snort. So when raptor starts speaking, he shouldn't say, I know who you are, but I think, yes, I know who you are, is better here. Or, so yes, I know who you are. Yeah, so yes, definitely. But this means, I, I added the yes, I know who you are earlier on. Could this, this might just be the way Raptor speaks, though. Uh, I mean, the context here is that Jewel doesn't know that he knows, so he needs to sort of assert this over and over, so it's like, yes, I know who you are, like, yes, I'm, I'm in on it, basically, so, yeah. so, so, like, from, from the meanings point of view, or from the contents point of view, it makes sense that he's, uh, repeating it. Uh, so okay, I will, I will leave the double yes in, and if somebody mm -hmm. picks up on it, then then we will return to the we will return with a vengeance. <laughs> but now, uh, so on one hand. Uh, so now, now the point about hiring, uh, uh, hiring bounty hunter. How do we bridge the gap, or how do we bridge the logical leap from some somebody in their shoes would hire a bounty hunter to, well, they would have hired a seeker except they didn't trust them. Mm -hmm. Th so there, there is a sort of gap there. So on one hand, uh, it is a general statement that if you if you need to find somebody, you hire uh, you hire a bounty hunter or an, or an enforcement agent or whatever. But on the other hand, there there should be like we knew that they were or like we. <laughs> We are making the case that they were specifically dealing with seekers, so it's like so there there has to be it's almost like there has to be another layer of trust that seekers were the only or or like the most trustworthy organization were seekers, and they couldn't trust even them mm -hmm. in their shoes would normally hire a bounty hunter to do their jobs do the job This is where we can't really, we can't even, we can't even say that they would have hired a seeker, or they, they would turn to seekers because they were the most reputable, but... Didn't Trista think she had a threat, like, didn't she think she had someone she could trust originally in the seekers, and then they turned out also to be pretty bad? Yeah, but then uh, why not hire a different agency? So mm. yeah, so yeah, the dissu dissuaded from di direct efforts, or or they learned the hard way that she couldn't trust anyone within Seekers. That's that's the point where where she knows that her former associates have turned against her. Uh, oh, okay, I, I, I guess I can twist it a little bit. So somewhere in, in her shoes would normally hire a bounty hunter to do the job, and they did try to get something going. So uh, maybe they did hire bounty hunters. Uh, no, I wouldn't go as far. It's it's more like, well, 
it's more like she was tapping into the resources. She was doing it herself, after all. Yeah. So it's more like, but by trying to collaborate with seekers, Mama Bear learned the hard way. Hmm. So it's like someone in her shoes would normally hire a bounty hunter to do the job. <coughs> <coughs> Trained from birth has got to be another trope, surely. Oh, another yeah. cliche. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we have, so let's say what we have. We have <laughs> <laughs> the cliche bingo for Seeker. Uh, the wake up opening, dying confession, tra trained from the birth, mm -hmm. sort of child assassin, also kind of sort of sleeper agent. Because she doesn't, she doesn't know what she was trained for. Uh, the mentor who knows more than uh, more <laughs> than uh, he lets uh, lets out. Absolutely, yes. Uh, evil, uh, evil conspiracy is a little bit mm. no, not quite there. Uh, there is uh, one uh, one trope. That I don't think it's it's been described, at least not yet, or maybe it's described under a different name. I would call it the absent martial mother. <laughs> yeah. So so this would be uh, this would be what Allison is in uh, in Red versus Blue, to Carolina. Mm. So here Trista is this the jewel. Yeah. But uh, but that but this is not the very very widespread trope yet. So. So at at least we have some some smidge of originality <laughs> or some smidge of uh, novelty going on. And and Ray, he he's got some tropiness going on about him. The jubilant bad guy. He, who's yeah. Too, Boist, who boisterous, boisterous bad guy probably yeah. has a moustache. Uh, mm -hmm. Although no, well, but he he does have <laughs> the lavish hair. Uh, Hair decoration cut yeah, thing going on. Yeah, that feeds into his tattoos or, or merges into his tattoos. I think that's cool. Douchebag haircut. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or, I don't know what you call it. Shave um, pattern. And also, not finishing off the good guy. Yeah, the this, this, is, this, guy. Is, this is that's a major... That's a huge one. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a huge one. There is a villain speech, kind of, mm -hmm. sorta, and yeah. and indeed leaving the bad guy, uh, I mean leaving the leaving the good guy bleeding out without making sure they are really dead. <laughs> <laughs> um, Excellent. <laughs> I guess I guess uh, the presence of st standard galactic shared language and and credits also apply. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, definitely. Credits are just the the go-to currency for sci-fi, I think, mm. in most instances. <laughs> that was one of the things Carnage moaned about when he was when he started playing Syndicate. <laughs> he was like, "I'm, <laughs> I was born either hundred years too early or hundred years too late because he either wanted to be in the Wild West or he wanted to be in the time when it's all credits and flying cars and this." <laughs> you know, <so. laughs> He's like, some of you will get to see all this, but you'll be 90 and you'll be dribbling and you won't understand what's going on. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah I, f I think uh, we can figure out a few more. So, like, we should dedicate a whole episode uh, or a whole session for doing the trope bingo. Oh yeah. Or the cliche bingo for Seeker. <laughs> 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 Loudly and proudly. Definitely. Okay, so I think right now I will leave I will leave this paragraph B. Mm-hmm. I will put a marker here. A very shiny marker. Bam.
<laughs> the shiniest. Wow, that is pretty hardcore. Yeah. So I will put the shiny marker here and uh, try to um, work on the wording here so that it wouldn't be too long. Another thing to consider is that chapter 15 is very long. If more than one reader brings up uh, that maybe we should put a chapter break somewhere, uh, then I would consider it. Yeah. Al although uh, the action all takes place in uh, in one confined uh, place, so in a way it belongs together, kinda. But I but I'm semi open to discussion here. It goes from the compound to Raptor's car. Mm-hmm. Car. Um, Flying car. <laughs> <laughs> Ding! So, that, that in my mind is the only comfortable... Because I, because after that point, the rest of the scene takes place in in the, in the quote-unquote car. Yeah, then but, they uh, but then again, the, uh, the, the way... I think I already moved some scenes back and forth. And right now... Uh, the the stuff that goes on in the car right now, or in the glider, belongs together with certain stuff that uh, mm. uh, that uh, happens inside the compound. So, but but yeah, we we might have to pick a meaningful break off point. Yeah. Especially because some of the earlier chapters, like 12 and 14, are very short. Mm. They're like... I know, well, not, not that short, though. They are like... They are like six, uh, 5 and 6. They are two. Okay, so chapter... Chapter 12 is 2 pages. Chapter 13 is 3 pages. Chapter 14... Also three pages. Okay, fourteen felt longer, and fifteen, four, five, six. Yeah. So so fifteen is considerably longer. So this is something to consider later on. But yeah, for now, uh, let us leave it be. Yeah. I will, I will work on it on my own now. And uh, this is all from from me today. Thanks for watching. Indeed. Bye.